G'day everyone and welcome to another RootTube video. In today's video we're going to focus on transformations which is in the year 12 further maths course. Just the one learning objective for today's lesson um, which can sort of be split up into three different learning objectives but I thought I'll sort of group them all together. So we're going to be using squared, log and reciprocal transformations to linearize scatter plots with the use of a CAS calculator. So as we proceed through the, the video you'll see that there's a fair few screen recordings of me using my CAS calculator and sort of talking through a few of those steps. All right, so let's begin by having a look at two things in this part of the video. The first one is why we use transformations or why we transform data. And the second part of this section is just looking at the circle of transformations. So when scatter plots are non-linear, certain transformations must be performed to linearize the data. Okay, so that's the whole point in, or the whole reason why we perform those transformations. Okay, so it is to linearize the data or to make them into a straight line or as close to a straight line as possible. Okay, so now we have the circle of transformations. Now I think it's really important that you have reference of this um, in your summary notes or in your reference as you proceed throughout the year. This circle of transformations is something you're going to need to refer to um, in SACS and definitely at the end of the year in the exam or in both exams. So the circle of transformation. So essentially what it says is if we have our scatter plot, which we can see this curve here is clearly nonlinear. If we have our scatter plot that looks like that, the only possible transformations we can use or we can apply to our data is a y squared transformation, a log x transformation and a reciprocal of x. Now, don't worry too much about what they are um, so far. Um, we're going to get to that in the second part of the video. But just know that depending on what your data or what your scatter plot looks like, it sort of pushes you to use or sort of forces you to use specific transformations to actually linearize your data. And like I said, we're going to talk about what it actually does when we transform and how we actually transform using the CAS. So if we keep moving along, if we have our scatter plot that has this downward sort of curve, we can clearly see it's non-linear. We can either use the y squared or the x squared. Okay, so there's what's called square transformations. Then moving down to the bottom right, okay, we've got this curve up here. We, if our scatter plot looks like that, we can use a log of y, a log y, the reciprocal of y, and a x squared transformation to linearize the data. And then the final one, we can see this curve here. If our scatter plot looks like that, clearly nonlinear once again, we can use log y, reciprocal of y, log of x, and the reciprocal of x. So we can use log or reciprocal transformations. Okay, so let's have a look at squared transformations. Okay, so the information on this slide uh, is quite important, but you won't necessarily need to know what it actually does because as you'll see as we proceed through the video the CAS calculator does it all for you okay but this is just showing you that when we do perform squared transformations um, this is actually showing you what happens to the data values so how it actually gets linear or how it actually linearizes so if we have a look at the first one the x squared transformation okay the x squared transformation so how does it work? Well, it involves stretching the larger x values more than the smaller x values. Okay, so you'll see what it's doing with the larger x values is actually pulling them or stretching them to the right. Okay, and you'll see that as they pull them to the right, the dots are actually joining or they're going to create a straight line or close to a straight line. So that's the process of actually linearizing the data with a squared transformation. The larger X values increase more than the X values while the Y values remain the same. So you'll see those dots don't go up or down, they just move to the right. And then obviously the whole idea of transformations, it has the effect of stretching the data into a straight line. Okay, so that's what it wants to do and that's sort of the objective. Now Y squared transformation involves stretching the larger y values more than the smaller y values. So now instead of moving to the right, the y values are now being stretched up. Okay, and you'll see if those dots were to sort of move up, again, it's going to stretch the data into a straight line. 
okay and now you'll see the larger y values increase more than the um, the larger y values increase more than the smaller y values so then the x values remain the same so in a y squared transformation the values the data values aren't moving left and right they're just moving up okay and that's going to linearize our data okay so let's have a go at performing a squared transformation on the CAS which is something you really need to be proficient in because it will pop up multiple times throughout the year. So a scatter plot was constructed from the following data. And then we've got our table of values with X and Y and the specific values in there. And what it tells us to do is apply an X squared transformation and state the equation of the least squares regression line. Okay, so what you need to do first of all is we need to open up our list and spreadsheets and we need to input our values. So we're going to label our columns as X and Y, and then we're going to enter in our values. Once you have done that, then you are going to create your scatter plot by heading to the data and stats page. And then on your X variable, you're going to put X and on your Y, you're going to put Y. Okay, and we should have our scatter plot drawn. And hopefully we can clearly see that curve, okay, which indicates that it's nonlinear. Now what you can do is to obtain your least squared regression line or regression equation, okay, analyze and then regression and show linear A plus BX. Now that's not the answer we're looking for because we haven't performed a transformation yet. Okay, but that will change once we perform the transformation, which we're going to do now. So then now, let's go back to our data and stats page. Sorry, lists and spreadsheets. And then now, in the third column, we, because we're performing an X squared transformation, let's just call it XSQ, all right, for X squared. Now, in this little cell underneath, as soon as you press into it, it's going to open up as the column name, and equal. So this is essentially where you put your little formula. And what we want to do is we want to square all of the X values. So you can just type in X to the power of two. And then if you press enter, it should do it for you. Otherwise, you should get a little box that pops up like this, where it says column or variable reference. Now what we want to do all the time when you are prompted with this little box is always to press on variable reference. And then as soon as you press OK, it will apply to every single value that you have in your list and spreadsheets. Now what we need to do, we're almost there now. We go back to our data and stats. Now you'll see nothing's changed here. That's because you haven't really done anything on this, pay, on this slide or this um, sort of tab. So now because we performed an X squared transformation, we now want to click to change variable. Now we don't want to have X here anymore. We now want to have that third column that we created, which we called X squared. And now in live real time, you can actually see the data points being dragged to the side. So as soon as we hit that, you will see the data points being moved to the side to hopefully create a linear scatter plot. And there we are, we can see it in real time. And then now what we can do, or you'll see your regression equation, which you can just pick up and drag around, has actually changed because your data values have changed. So now we've applied the X squared transformation and state the equation of the least squared regression line. Now a really common error is people, a lot of students just write what they see on the screen. Okay, now the Y variable can stay because it's called Y and it was called Y in the question, but it could be called multiple things. Okay, in terms of specific words, equals zero plus one times. Now it's not multiplied by X anymore. We have performed an X squared transformation, but the calculator doesn't recognize that. So the calculator won't say X squared. So you need to know if you're performing an X squared transformation, the new regression equation looks like this. Y equals zero plus one X squared. So if you were just to type one times X, it would be incorrect. Okay, it's close but close isn't good enough in this specific example, okay? So make sure we performed an X squared transformation, so therefore when we see X in the regression equation, 
we need to change it to x squared. Unfortunately, our calculator or the CAS calculator does not or isn't able to recognize that. All right, now let's have a go at the log transformation. So once again, just like the uh, squared transformations, it's not really, um, really important that you know what is happening because like I said, the CAS calculator can do it for you, but it is good to know and sort of see what's actually happening and how values are being either compressed or stretched when you're performing these uh, transformations on the CAS. So let's have a look at the log X transformation. It works by compressing the larger X values more than the lower X values with the Y values remaining the same. So we can see our data values are getting pulled or compressed to the left. Okay, and that is obviously going to linearize our data. Okay, and then if we have data that's sort of, um, the scatter plot that's sort of trending in the opposite direction, it's gonna pull the data values to the left, like so. Okay, so once again, the whole idea of the transformations is to linearize the data. And the log y transformation works by compressing the larger y values more than the lower y values with the x values remaining the same. So once again, we're not moving the values left and right, we're just moving the values or compressing the values down in this case. Okay, and then we see on both diagrams, the values are just being brought down or compressed. And once again, the data is becoming linear. All right, let's have a go at performing a log transformation on the CAS calculator. So just to save us a little bit of time, I've just entered the uh, data values here. So a scatter plot was constructed from the following data, which I've already entered into the CAS. Perform the relevant log transformation and state the equation of the least squares regression line. Okay, so it's really important to know on the previous question, we were told which transformation, the X transformation uh, to perform, whereas on some occasions you will sort of um, have to make your mind up in terms of which one to use. Okay, and that's where the circle of transformations comes into it. So, like I said, I've just entered the values into the lists and spreadsheets. And just like we normally do, let's go to data and stats. And now let's plot our scatter plot. So we've now plotted. And if we head to the circle of transformations, we should know that we should, or well, the only log transformation that we can perform for data with this specific uh, curve or non-linearity is a log of the x variable. Okay, so we're gonna log age, or the age values. Okay, so just like we did before, we're now going to create a new column, which we'll now just call log age. And now what we're gonna do is, again, in here, we're just going to put our formula in. So what we're gonna do is, we want to find the log, remember it's always log base 10, of now whatever you called that column. So the first column we called age. And you see, as soon as you type in the whole word, it'll go sort of bold, which indicates that it's recognized that something is labeled as that. As soon as you press enter, it should pop up automatically, or if it doesn't, and it comes up with column and variable reference, just like I said before, always variable reference. Now we go back to our data and stats. Now we don't want the age anymore. We now want the log of age. Okay, so as soon as you do that, once again, you'll see that it linearizes the data. Now it doesn't matter whether you have your regression line there already like I did previously. This time I left it out purposely just to show you that it does not matter whether you have the regression equation there before or if you find it afterwards just like we're about to do. So as soon as you press log of age, it brings the data values just to the right slightly. Okay, so it didn't make a massive change, but it linearized the data ever so slightly. Now we can hit menu and then analyze and then regression. And once again, show linear A plus B X. Now you'll see we have a very funny answer right, with heaps of decimal places and heaps of digits. Okay, so in a question like this, you will most likely be, or not most likely, you will definitely be asked to round to either uh, certain decimal places or uh, significant figures. 
Um, but again, in this, now it's gonna be, instead of it being y equals, it's now gonna be height equals because height is the y variable. And then you would have equals negative 21.52, whatever the rounding asks you to do. So depending on the significant figures or the rounding. And then now really important to note in an exam at the front, it will always say round to two decimal places if not prompted. So let's go with that. So it should be height equals negative 21.53 plus 161.35 multiplied now not by x, not by age, but it's now gonna be the log and then in brackets age. So again, I'll read that again. So it's height equals negative 21.52, sorry, 53 plus 161.35 multiplied by log bracket age. So the log of age, because we have found the log of all of the x variables. All right, and the final transformation for today is what we call the reciprocal transformation, okay? So the x reciprocal transformation is just one on x, okay? So if we think about x being on its own, the reciprocal is just flipping the x to the bottom of the fraction and putting the one on the top of the fraction. So the reciprocal just means when you flip the numerator and the denominator. So how it works is it compresses the x values that are greater than one while stretching x values that are less than one, okay? So again, if we have a look, what it's gonna do is it's going to bring these values to the right and then it's going to bring these values to the left okay and you'll see it's going to make our data linear and then the y reciprocal transformation so now one on y so one divided by y what it does is it compresses the y values that are greater than one while stretching y values that are less than one okay so you see these values to the left hand side they're being brought up and then these values here are being brought down. Okay, once again, main objective is to linearize your data. All right, and finishing off the video, we are going to have a look at reciprocal transformation on the CAS. So once again, just to save us a little bit of time, I've entered the data values in terms of the hour of study and the test score. So a scatter plot was constructed from the following data. And we've got hours of study and test score, and hopefully we know about response and explanatory variables by now. Um, so the question says, or it wants us to perform the relevant reciprocal transformation and state the equation of the least squares regression line, rounding all values to two decimal places. And right, we'll keep that in mind when we get to the end. Once again, enter the values as per normal. Okay, and then we're gonna to go to data and stats. And then we are now going to put our explanatory variable, which is hours, don't mind this sky, I just spelled score wrong before. So we've got hours studied and then score should be here. So now we have the same sort of curve that we had from the log transformation, but this time the question clearly says perform the relevant reciprocal transformation. And then if we have a look at our circle of transformation, the reciprocal transformation that we must use and must follow is the reciprocal, the reciprocal of X. So now we're gonna go back just like we did before, create a third column. We're just gonna call it rest and then hours. So REC for reciprocal and then hours. And then in here, we're just gonna put our formula. So it's now the reciprocal of X is one over X. So now we're just gonna open up the fraction and then we've got one. Now don't worry too much if you can't see it down. So you can't see in that box because it's a little bit too big. You can just see it down here. It's almost like zoomed in down here. So now instead of writing one over X, you'll see the X is not bold. That's because you haven't not labeled anything as X, but we want to write the variable that we put on the X axis, which was hours. So as soon as you type hours correctly, then you should be able to hit enter and then it, the values come up. So we found the reciprocal of all of those values. Now, once again, if the little box comes up and it says column reference or variable reference, always variable reference. Now we go back to the next tab, which is the data and stats back here. And then now this is where you'll see the most movement. So now because we performed a reciprocal of X transformation, we're then gonna change the X variable. If we performed a Y, a reciprocal of Y transformation, then we would change score, okay? So we're gonna select from hours. Now we want rest hours, so reciprocal of hours, and you'll see a big change here. 
everything has shifted completely. Now you will see that that is clearly been linearized. And then as we did before, we can hit menu, analyze, regression, and show linear A plus BX, and there's our regression equation. Now, again, round to two decimal places, as it says, but now instead of being Y equals, it's now gonna be score equals or test score. Let's be specific, it's test score, not just score. So test score equals 103.94 plus negative 67.75 multiplied by, now it's not X, it's one over hours of study. So one over hours of study. So one on the top of the fraction and then underneath is hours of study because that was the X variable. I'll read it one last time. So it's gonna be test score equals 103.94, rounded to two decimal places, plus negative, now if it's a positive and negative next to each other, it just turns into a negative, so you can just have a subtraction sign. So minus 67.75 multiplied by one over test, sorry, one over hours of study, which is the X variable. Thanks again for popping in and watching another video brought to you by RooTube. Now, whether you're learning about transformations for the first time or you've come and searched for the video just to build on some prior knowledge, uh, hopefully you did learn a thing or two about the transformations and the use of the CAS calculator along the way as well. Now, as always, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything uh, specific that you want me to cover uh, in future videos, please just uh, drop a comment below. Um, in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to create another video. Thank you and see you next video